What up, everybody? We are back. Yes, we are. Yep. No, I <laughs> oh, no. Me this way. I, Lauren yeah. was to my to my right. Drew Lincelotta to my left. <laughs> it's happening. What's, what's happening? So um, we're back again. We did this last month, and we said, you know what? We should probably just do a thing monthly, just to to come up with some stuff. Yeah. 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 So today Good we're going to talk about, yeah, for those of you who do not know, if you're watching on whatever my channel happens to be, whatever, uh, this is Lauren Rosen. She is at the obsessive mind on Instagram. You should go check her out. Um, Thank you. yeah, thanks for coming by as always. It's always fun to talk to you today. We're going to talk oh. about, yeah, our topic today is, but I don't want to do my exposures, but I, but yeah. I want to do my compulsions. Yeah. Yeah. Because, which of course we do <laughs> like not want to do exposures and, or not. Oh. And want to do compulsions. However, there's another side to things that, that in recovery, we've got to explore, right? All right, bring it. What do you got? Well, I think that stopping at, I don't want to do my exposures or I want to do my compulsions negates about half of an individual. It's, it, it's true. And there's also the part of you that does want to do your exposures and the part of you that doesn't want to do compulsions that shows up for therapy or support groups or on, even on Instagram or whatever, just, just trying to get support and to, to recover. And so people are so identified with this part of them that doesn't want to do exposures, that does want to do compulsions. And I think sometimes people who advocate for recovery can be sort of in this almost uh, adversarial position of like advocating for recovery. And then it takes away from the person's actual desire to want to change. So I think it's important that we recognize that it's, it's both, right? Like it's, yeah. I want to do it and I, I want to do the compulsion and I also don't want to do the compulsion. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's totally normal that I have the urge and that I want to. And at the same time, I don't have to, and it probably would be better served by not doing it. I like it. That's a, a trying to serve two masters thing. Like I mm -hmm. want to get better, but I also want to be comfortable right now. So yes. tough, tough call. I can't really serve both of those masters all the time. No, unfortunately yeah. not. <laughs> I like your, the statement that you just made, like people who advocate for recovery. So I just want to make sure I'm understanding like you, you or I, people like you or I, mm -hmm. um, we have to be careful about pressing people into a corner where they feel like, no, no, you have to do it this way. Like you're not, we're, we're not validating that other half of them that says, but I, but I'm afraid, but I don't want to do this. Right. Is that point? I, yeah. That's absolutely it. And in addition to that, it's even by saying you should do your exposure work mm -hmm. or uh, sort of being too much of a cheerleader. Uh, at some stages, it can take away the agency from the other person. It's sort of putting, like, uh, creating this, this back and forth yeah. where one person is advocating and the other person is sort of like pushing back and saying, well, but I don't want to. Uh, like, I see this, if I can clarify a little bit, when people are out on their own throughout the week, sometimes they'll say, oh, I think Lauren would want me to do this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I want you to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And what, whether or not you do compulsions, it's not a moral question. So you don't, it's not like you shouldn't do compulsions. You'd probably be better served by not doing compulsions given right. where they lead you. But it's not about me. It's about you. What do you want? Like, don't externalize the part of you that wants to change and put it on me. As much as, of course, like, of course, I want people to get better. Right. Um, well, yeah. they were, assuming that they're, they're engaging because they want to. So I we get that. But yeah. 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 But does that, that make sense that it, if we. No, it actually makes really good sense. I see two things there. Number one is the, you know, you don't, don't back a, a wounded animal to a corner, which I, yes. I can completely get that. In my worst days, mm -hmm. I knew what I had to do, but somebody who told me to do it and do it, that, that would not go well at all. Like no. I get it. There's, there's <laughs> anger there. There's discomfort, there's fear, there's anger. And then that, that becomes a resistance. Like, no, no, stop telling me to do that. And then the other thing is interesting because I actually made a post about this the other day. So it's so fascinating that you brought that up. I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting to talk about this. And basically what I said was, you should expect your report, your support 
gr your support system, if you will, including, I guess, your therapist or your counselor counts, your online groups, whoever the people you follow on Instagram, mm -hmm. to cheer for you and tell you that you can recover. Mm -hmm. Do not expect us to tell you that you should, because yeah. everybody is free to make whatever choice they want all the time, and that choice should be expected. So yeah. I should be respected. I'm sorry, not expected. But and I think that speaks to that a little bit. Like I can't, I'm not going to tell you to do these things. I'm just going to tell you that you can. And yes. then, then from there, and you know, from one day to the next, it might change. One day you might be really gung-ho to do your exposures or not do your compulsions. And the next day it flips and you just feel incapable. I get that. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. having I love that that having the support system say that you can and recognize your capacity without ever saying what you should be doing or, yeah. or, or telling you what to do. I believe in my heart that that is an individual. Everybody has a, honestly, I feel like everybody has a right to not recover if they choose that. That's okay. As long Absolutely. as you know I, I would stand behind somebody who chooses that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 But your point, knowing the implications, because I think a lot of people uh, want to have both. And I understand. I've been there too. Uh, yes, I get that. And, it's, and it speaks a little bit to, oops, sorry, I'm getting notifications. Um, it speaks like a little it. bit to, there are times when I, in on my platform, my community, where I have found myself in a position where somebody is asking, they are arguing that they, they don't want to do the, or they shouldn't, or they can't do these things. And I have to okay. step back sometimes and say, wait a minute here. I'm not here to argue, to, to convince you to recover. I, I will cheer for you if you decide you want to do that. So do you find, yeah. you know, and especially in, in a therapeutic relationship with the client, do you ever find yourself in that position? Or wait a minute, I, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I forgot. Yes. Well, yeah, because we do want people to get better. I think especially if you have personal lived experience, whether you're uh, a therapist or not, that they're getting into that position of advocating for change and then realizing, oh, whoa, this is not, this needs to be yours. Yeah. And if it's not, if you're not taking the reins here, the the change won't be sustainable because you're not doing it for the right reasons, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, that leads us down to that whole like everybody needs to, it's so funny because I, I always say everybody needs sometimes to lick their wounds sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I kind of I wrote about that too, where like, hey, look, when you're having a bad day, it's okay to have a bad day. Put some time aside where you can hate the world and be angry and resentful and disappointed and sad and cry and curse and hit a pillow, whatever. That's okay to do that. And on those days, you may be more in that mindset where you're like, you know what, I just going to do these compulsions today because I just, I just need to today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, see me again tomorrow then. It wasn't tomorrow's a new day. You never know. Right. Absolutely. But yeah. that, I think I really love what we're talking about of, of handing it off as like, this is not, this is not about you being good or bad. It's not about the right or the wrong thing to do. It's there. It, everything has a, a, everything has causes and conditions, right? And so the, the, if you take an action, there will be some sort of a secondary effect. If you want that secondary effect, then, then do that. If you don't, then probably do something else. Yeah. Which is very and, fair. Yeah. yeah. But if I think, especially with the, the sort of, over overzealous advocating <laughs> and i've certainly done yeah. plenty of that myself in my day yeah. that un unfortunately it, it's sort of like telling somebody to to go put on a coat when it's cold outside right the initial response is i don't want to put on a coat don't tell me what to do right even if it's even if it's uh, with the best of intentions and having that sense of autonomy in it and independence and like no, I'm doing this because I don't want to be under the sway of my anxiety at this point. Um, that that's, I don't know. That's the only way I think ultimately. No, it's good. Uh, I'm good thing. You weren't my mother. Cause I never wanted to put on my coat. Don't tell me to put on the coat. It's such a, so funny that you put that. I know it's freezing it. I would intentionally be like freezing just to, yeah. no, I'm not putting on the coat. Yeah. Forget so I, get you. I don't want to put on the stupid coat. Yeah, that could be a personality trait thing too. So for some people, I don't do well being told what to do. I will freely admit that. Call it a flaw, if you will. So somebody who's overzealously advocating for me to do the right thing could that could backfire a little bit. Um, but what about on the other side? Because that's interesting too. I, I don't disagree. I think some people are more inclined to push back and not want to be told what to do. But then there are people. It's good that I do that, but I know well, that I did. 
Yeah. Which I totally, and I get it. I do. I think, yeah. I think to some extent we all do it. And I, I don't think it's an unhealthy thing. I think it's just an, a, a reflection of a desire to be autonomous. Right. But on the other side of things, there are people who want to be told what to do, right? They want to be led through it piece by piece. And that's, that's equally a problem because if you're doing your exposures because it's right or you should, I don't know. I think oftentimes it's, it's done, it can be done with the intent of trying to eradicate the disorder, like, and, and not with the intent of like, I'm doing this because I want something different. Like I want a different experience. Yeah. This is such a good conversation. It's very nuanced, isn't it? Like it is. I feel like I, I feel my my wheels turning as I'm yeah. I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. 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 It really is. And I think this speaks a little bit to you're right. Some people, well, some people just need the encouragement a little more. Well, I'll call it encouragement. You know, they yeah. need a little more, whatever, hand holding, coaching, whatever you want to call it. This is where the limitations of social media to me come into play. And you have to realize, mm -hmm. like, I I don't know you. You know, if you're watching this video, I, I I don't know you. There's like 10 of you maybe that I really know that might be watching this. But yeah. otherwise, I don't know you. So I don't know if you're somebody who just maybe lacks some confidence and needs more cajoling or cheerleading, or if you're somebody who's a little bit more don't tell me what to do. I have you have we have no idea. Right. Yeah. And this is where it becomes really important to understand the difference between accessing psychoeducation and encouragement on on Instagram or YouTube and actually having a therapeutic relationship with a clinician. Right. Very different. It is because, because of that nuance and uh, yeah. And, and knowing what the person needs. And the, the thing is, it's all down to the person. Ultimately, even if you are in a therapeutic relationship, the, the hope is that you are going to gain awareness about, oh, I need more, I need more encouragement today, or I need more, um, I need some tough love and even to ask for it when you can. I think ultimately you're going to have the best awareness of yourself. Yeah. 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 Let's talk for a second about one, one thing that I found interesting too is and I have to go back to this statement, my community often, I have to literally say like in my Facebook group, you, by definition, you cannot disappoint me or this group because yeah. some, some people will like, Oh, I, I feel like I let you down. Well, you can't let me down. I don't know you. And, and I have no, What's the word I'm looking for here? Um, skin in the game? Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you. I really don't have any skin. I, I want to encourage you and I want to see you get better. I want I want you to get what you want, but yeah. you cannot disappoint me. Or I know you can't disappoint Lauren by maybe doing your compulsions that day, even though she said on Instagram you shouldn't. Right. And that's, I think, what I was trying to get at maybe somewhat clumsily with the, the question of somebody doing like doing exposure work or not doing compulsions because they're being told to, and they're trying to do it right. That, that you're, you're now in this paradigm where you're, you're still trying to, to, to get the gold star or which I think it, it ultimately can backfire because when you don't do it now, it's, Oh, they're upset with me or I'm bad. Um, as opposed to just, Oh no, you're just, you're, you're doing your thing and, and this happened and it's okay. Yeah. And, and, and nobody's upset with you. Nobody's going to think poorly of you. It's, it's down to whether or not it's serving you. And that's again, at that point, picking it up and saying, okay, well, it's not serving me. That's where the, the vivacity of recovery comes from. Mm, the vivacity of recovery. That's our next book. People look for it. Uh, <laughs> good title. Just saying. Um, I like yeah, that. that's that's really good. I look, getting looking for the gold star, I think, is a lot of people do fall into that trap. Like, I want, yeah. I need validation, or at least want confirmation that I'm always doing it right. But yeah. I was trying to tell people, like, hey, look, maybe today wasn't the best day. Maybe you fell back into some some old habits. We all do it. It happens to everybody. What can it you does. learn from today? And then what can you take into tomorrow? What lesson from today can you take? Every day counts even when it's not maybe the best air quotes, best day. Right. In There's fact, we learn so much from those days that are probably not what we would consider to be the best days that sometimes those are the most important days. Yeah. And they're sometimes the most distasteful lessons. I know for me, one of the lessons I learned from my, I don't want to do it days was 
that I was using. I was somebody posted about this this morning too, which was really good. And it's so funny. Mm -hmm. You ever, ever open Instagram and see your own words? And it's oh, like, I, I think yeah. I wrote that. So yeah. it, it was it was really a little weird at six a.m. But uh, I found that I was using rest as a reward. And like, mm -hmm. oh well, I did this really hard thing, so I can you know I'll just chill out mm -hmm. for four days. Yeah. And that so those bad days and those days where I was resistant taught me that. But that was a really distasteful lesson for me to have to learn about me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a real negative feedback loop there. Like I'm having a bad day, and that's showing me lessons that oh, I wish I didn't have to learn. Right. Yeah. Oh, I don't, yeah. Yeah. And I think I just sort of spinning off of, of the lesson itself, it, it's interesting because the, the reward is intrinsic to the doing of the hard things. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think everyone realizes that coming in to this process because, you know, it's like, no, the, the end game is what we're looking for. And I think actually that the amount of self-esteem, self-worth, right? The, the sense of efficacy yeah. that you get from doing the hard things, that it's so empowering. And I, I, I think that that is in and of itself a reward that yeah. people oftentimes overlook. I would agree. And I would think that every exposure, every experience stands on its own to a certain extent too. There's a lesson and they all serve a purpose, whether they're mm -hmm. good, bad, otherwise you were perfect, you weren't, you made mistakes, whatever. There's every one of them stands on its own as its own experience that matters. Are, they're additive, yes. But if you're only going to look down the road and only keep your eyes on the, on the prize, you're going to miss some of that. And I think that adds to resistance too. This individual thing felt crappy and, and it, I don't want to do it, but no, right. but it had value. Doing it had the value. The value was yes. in the doing it. Yeah. The value is in the doing it. The value is in the experience that you had recognizing that you could do it. Yeah. The, the value is also in one of the things that I know from my own recovery, and I've seen it so often in the people that I work with is recognizing that there's actually a lot of peace in dropping in particular mental compulsions mm. that there's actually like moment in the moment piece and saying, I am going to accept uncertainty. It's very uncomfortable still. So it's both. There is also this relief of, I don't have to figure that out anymore. I don't have to do it. I'm free of it in this moment. Now it may in a couple other moments come back and I may be, yeah. you know, back in the, the, the swing of things, but so there is a lot that I think comes that comes from all of those experiences, the good days, the bad days, and and each of the the momentary stuff that we're we're talking about. Yeah, um, good stuff. Yeah, uh, this is a great conversation. We could do this for the next hour, I'm sure. But uh, I believe we probably could. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, try and wrap it up within about twenty minutes or so. So, this is what's the takeaway here? Hmm. Let's, wrap, let's wrap this up. I don't want to do my exposures, but I want to do my compulsions today. What would you tell, what would you tell somebody? I think I would tell them to consider why they don't want to do their compulsions or why they do want to do their exposures to both hold the fact that they, they do want to compulse or they don't want to do exposures and, and acknowledge that and even validate that. Of course, you don't want to do them today. And yeah. also we're going to do them anyway, because I want this, I want a sense of empowerment. I want a sense of agency around my life. I want momentary peace and not being in the rat race of trying to figure all of this out. Um, and I also want long-term to be in a place where my, my thoughts don't have such a hold on me and my feelings don't get to dictate what I do. So that's, I don't know. What, what about you? What, what would you say? That's a good question. I think I would tell people that it isn't always either or. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Now, look, this might be dangerous ground to go in because I'm not trying to, I, I, I'm the last person to give people an out. But there are days when you feel like you, it depends on why you don't want to do it. If you're just exhausted that day, because this is hard work and like, I just need a break. I get that. And taking a break because you're just done, you're out of gas from all this is perfectly valid, but it doesn't have to be black or white. Maybe you could do or on an exposure standpoint. I always tell people, what if you did something really tiny instead of just laying in bed all day, go and sit in your garden for 10 minutes and then go to bed. If you want to, at yeah. least you did something. So you don't look back and say, well, the day was a total loss. Um, yeah. 
So it does, it's not always black or white. It doesn't have to be either or. That's so true. Yeah. And I love your point love about about the, uh, just, I know we're wrapping up, but the, right. the, the element of, it depends on where you're at. There's no one size fits all answer to this. And it's not like you should always, or that you would even be best served to always do your exposures. And, and there are days when the, the best answer for you is going to be to take it easy. Yeah. Um, and, but that's it, but it's such a moving target. There's no, there's, there's just no, yeah. It is. Awesome. We're going to do this again next month. I don't know what we're going to talk about next month, but we'll do it. Me either. I'm looking forward to it though. Always great. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. This is always so much fun talking to you. For those of you who do not not following Lauren, I'll put it back on the screen. So Lauren oh. is at the obsessive mind on Instagram. If you're watching on one of my channels, I'll put me up on the screen. I think you should. And uh, for those who are directed here from from my channels, uh, Drew is amazing. You should uh, check him out on Instagram, and you should also check out his books because he's he's awesome in so many respects. And then he's got the podcast too. Man. Wow. I'm hiring yeah. you as my publicist. Thank you, Lauren. Yep. <laughs> <Very kind. laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for coming by. We will see you the next time we do this. Bye. Later. Get hit the